So this video is going to have a look at the three main parts of BuildExact. We will have a look at capturing leads and how the lead section works. And lastly, we're really just going to answer the question of where do you start? So in BuildExact, when it really boils down to it, we do three main things. We capture leads, we produce estimates, and we manage jobs. Those three things um, are really designed to go one after the other. So in BuildExact, the place where you start is really supposed to be leads. And what will happen is that lead section is where you capture um, new opportunities, new prospects, you put in their information, and we're gonna go right through this in just a moment, but you're putting in their information, and once you have worked out if they're a good prospect, you'll then proceed onto the estimates part if you're gonna quote for them. Once you've done a quote for this person, if it goes well, it'll then move on to the job section for you to manage the project. So it definitely is supposed to work as parts one, two, and three in that order. A great example here is that you can use this as a bit of a sales funnel uh, because you might get, let's say, 100 leads come in the door. And once you've whittled them down, that might be 50 estimates. And of those 50 estimates, that might produce 25 jobs. So when we're starting, which is the lead section, which is what we're about to cover, um, this is really the front door to your business. This is really all the, uh, the new prospects and opportunities that come through through your door or, or phone out. Now to add one of those, we're gonna click on leads and gonna go capture lead. And it's gonna pop out saying, hey, is this an individual or a family or a business? And depending on which one we choose, the options are just a bit different. Uh, I'm gonna go through the individual slash family one. So I'm gonna say, this is a family and the main person is John Smith. It'll have a quick search through the clients area um, where the clients area is really just your address book um, of all your clients that you've worked for in the past. So if it finds it, you can say, yep, it's, it's another job for John. If it's uh, not found, you can say, add a new client. What it'll then ask for is the information or more information about the main person. So I'm gonna say, hey, yep, as mentioned, main person is John Smith. His phone number is that, and john at smithmail.com. When I go save and close, what it will do is two things. It will push me into the lead section to add more information, and it'll also add a client into the client's area. Up the top, as we go through pretty much anywhere in the program, you'll see um, a bit of a trail of events. So it's saying we're now in the lead and in the past we created John Smith as a customer. So if we want to go see his client profile, um, we could click on John Smith and it would take us into the client's area. Now, the information we're putting into this leads area, um, what I end up telling to most people is this is the kind of stuff you've been asking clients probably for quite some time. Um, all we're really doing for you is giving you a home to keep it and keeping it really, really organized. So this is things like your project type. I'm gonna say new build, you know, your budget. Start date. And you can fill out as much or as little of this as you need. We get quite a number of people who tell us that they will fill this out with clients on the phone. Um, so if they're in the office and they get a call, they will open a lead, fill this out while the person's actively on the line. Or if you get a, a website inquiry, um, easy, you can grab that information, pop it in here. But ultimately, as long as the information's getting in here, that's the, that's the main thing. Moving on down, there's other sections to this. Um, so sections like notes and documents. Notes is really for anything else that you wanna record about this lead. So it might be that we've already discussed uh, the permit. And you'll notice as I put these in, they get time and date stamped. I recommend to people to write absolutely everything down because um, if you need to look back and, um, and recall when something happened, you can always do that. 
and uh, really more is better as far as notes go. Documents, so you can store absolutely anything. And this might be things like, um, let's say selections that they've made or uh, permits if they've gone and done that already. So I'm gonna get an image of a oven that my client is keen on. And I'm just grabbing this off my computer. I'll say open. And whenever I throw a image or a file in, it'll always ask me to group it. So you'll notice again and again, we didn't try uh, to keep you quite organized. So I'm gonna say images, upload, which will create the folder as it goes. The main reason we have you put these into folders is because should you um, start sharing this kind of stuff with your client, the client will see the folders. Uh, so a key point here is that spelling uh, and naming is probably quite important for that reason. Moving up to the top, uh, two other key points here. With the stage um, or status, it's called in other areas of the software as well, um, we'll have basically where this lead is up to. So this is for you to tell us where, where it's at. And the whole point of these stages or statuses pretty much anywhere in the software is if you go quoting, for example, and back to leads, we'll categorize it for you and we'll give you a bit of a numbers view of the world. So I've got a very empty account, I don't have much to look at, but as I build up more and more leads, I can start to get a feel for how many I win. Um, you know, what proportion of those do I win? If I was looking at estimates, I get the same uh, list uh, or same idea where it's putting things into numbers. So I might be sending quotes off and it'll tell me, hey, you've sent off 50 quotes and they're all still sitting in sent, i.e. They've, they've never gone any further, no one's ever got back to you. So you could use that kind of information to make better decisions. And if you've got a whole horde of quotes that no one's ever responded to, that might be a, a good indicator to spend some time playing follow-up. But we use this idea of status or stage in so many different sections of the software. Back into the lead, I'm gonna quickly add how this person heard about me. So just say Google. And the last thing I wanna point out just on this screen is the client project often called the client portal. There is separate videos entirely on this, uh, but really quickly to summarize, this is how you would open up the client side of your project and it allows the client to see images and quotes and documents. And it's a really, really great tool for communication with your client back and forward. So we won't cover it in this video, but there's definitely separate videos on it. What I'm gonna do from here is go estimates and create a estimate for John. So I'll go create new. And when I do that, it's gonna give me two options. It's gonna say, do you want to create pretty much a blank nothing kind of estimate or do you wanna use a template? And while we have videos explaining in depth what templates are and how to make them, um, it's important that you know what they are at this point. So in short, a template is basically a preset estimate. So it's a great way of being able to start an estimate that's not blank, it's not nothing, it's got a lot of information in it. And you uh, in your BuildExact account will have uh, these standard ones like I do, um, because they'll be in all BuildExact accounts. And if I pick this single story one, for example, this is gonna contain a checklist of all the items we think goes into a single story build. Main benefit is uh, you can go through and go, yes, I need that, no, I don't need this. And you're really just being prompted for, for what to put in um, rather than having to stare at an empty screen and go, oh, I think I need this, I think I need this and kind of uh, have to remember everything. So I'm gonna say, yes, use this template and next. Last but not least, it'll ask what to call um, this estimate, so I'm gonna say the site address, but ultimately you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna say it's a single story, customer it knows, Google is how they heard about us, and probably the most confusing part for people when they see this the first time is, 
it wants to know which parts of my template do I want in my new estimate. The reason this is confusing is you probably haven't seen what the template looks like and hence uh, you don't really know what you're copying in. Biggest single tip um, up and, you know, uh, until you kind of get used to what these sections are is the categories and items is really the biggest part of it. That's absolutely needed. Everything else, you can kind of take it or leave it. If you're not sure of something though, um, best that you do click it because as a rule of thumb, it's much easier to copy it and then delete it versus copy it and then go, oh, I wish I'd brought across the, the quote content. So rule of thumb, bring across more if you're not sure and um, absolutely bring across these categories and items. Final point uh, just on this is if you are on an entry plan, um, that lead section that we just went through, you actually won't have that in your account. That said, it's absolutely worth knowing what's in there um, because we do get a lot of questions about, hey, can you capture leads uh, from people who don't have that in their account at the moment? That said, you will start from the estimate section and when you do so, you will end up in this exact same screen that we're in now. Um, so simply put, if you're on an entry plan, you'll simply skip the leads section. Great, so that's how to start uh, within BuildExact and how to manage your leads. Thanks very much.